begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Man, I had to go out and get a cane for my damn freaking knee. But then I said, you know what? I have one already. I got one with Max on the top. Look at that, baby. Nice and heavy. She's a good cane. Uh, but yeah, I screwed up my knee pretty damn bad. Pretty damn bad. I guess at my age, you're not supposed to be deadlifting. I lifted too much. Next thing you know, crack. Put that over there. Ooh, dropped it all over the floor on me. But yeah, I got Max. You know, it's going to be a recovery period. They're uh, doing MRIs and all that stuff to see what they can do. But yeah, sad state of affairs for me. Uh, you know, riding season, I don't know, man. I think it's over for me uh, this year. But we'll get back on, man. I'm just going to sit there, cry, stare at the damn bikes in the freaking uh, garage. Brand new motorcycle lift, so I guess I can work on uh, some bikes. Why I cry there. Uh, anyway, we got more news coming out of uh, Pennsylvania with uh, that crip, that that body that was found with uh, Keith Palumbo. There was a arrest in that case. Huh. Here we go. The haters boy out of uh, Chester County is going to be all over again. Them and their fake uh, profiles. <laughs> They're so stupid. They don't think anybody can track who's doing it. But, you know, they ain't the smartest cookies. Gotta say that. Also, we have uh, <laughs> the guy who uh, hit seven motorcyclists out of New Hampshire. We call him the New Hampshire Seven. He wants out of jail, uh, you know, while he's awaiting trial. I don't think that's a good idea, and I don't think it's going to happen because of his past and stuff. Because if he gets out of jail, he's going to hop on a plane right back to Ukraine. He is a foreign national. He is not an American. So they let him out. He gets his ass on a plane, and he gets out, out of town is what I'm thinking. You know, that's probably the ideal because he's facing probably life in uh, prison right now. Anything other than life in prison is not justice. Not justice at all, baby. Uh, also, we will be talking about there's the Crime Commission report that just came out, and it has to do with the Pagans Motorcycle Club. So what I'm going to do each segment of the show is I'm going to read a little bit and give my thoughts on it and give some rebuttals to the commission. Because we all know clubs don't like coming out and, you know, giving their side of the story most of the time. So I can give an opinion. And, you know, what I see, is it bias? Is it uh, overreaching? That kind of stuff. So we're going to go over that today. I think you'll find it very interesting. It's a 22-page report. That's why I got to break it down each uh, segment. That way we can get it in. And it also informs you how these commissions go after clubs. Now, in Chicago, the crime commission was, you know, established to go after the outfit most of the time. Uh, I don't know how it is on the East Coast with this one out of New Jersey, but I do know usually it's the outfit that they cover here. And these things are all biased. <laughs> Reading through them, you can tell where their bias lays. They only put the bad out there. They cherry pick from different events that's happened with an organization. They don't give the good side of it. It's only the bad. And it's always about trying to hype it up. That way the cops, law enforcement can expand their budgets. I think it was up in Canada. And I, I really do believe... Cops are starting to take a cue from up north and out in Australia when it comes to clubs. Up north, with all the bust they were doing, 
I think they were able to hire 1,500 more cops. That just goes to show you what their main goal is. Now, in Australia, even though a report said that bikey crime is like 0.0001% or something like that's not even at a percentage point of the crime that happens in Australia. But most of the time, those are the ones they're going to focus on because it captures the attention of the general public. You got to remember, bikers are like the last vestige of the outlaws that come out of the old days, out of the Wild West. They know people's attention is captivated by that type of stuff. So that's what they're going to use. That's what they're going to use to spread their propaganda. They're going to bastardize club members. They already do it. They already do it. They try to tie everybody into a club deal when, honestly, most bikers are independent. If they do ride with an organization, it's usually like ABATE or MRF, something like that. Most people do not belong to clubs. But they still try to, you know, put us in like that. Now, over this Crime Commission report, and yesterday I brought it up. Now, it's probably a hater. It's probably a keyboard warrior. I very much doubt that it was a member of a Pagans that said this. But according to this post, and I think I still have it up, or if he deleted it, he deleted it. Uh, he said, well, one percenters don't care what the general public th you know, think. <laughs> it's funny, before I get on to that, I had somebody uh, bitching and moaning about an answer I gave to somebody. Why do you only consider true one percenters that came out of the, you know, decades ago? Well, that's easy. They're the ones who put the work in. All those years, you, do you really think... See, I, I, I was wait, raised in a different time period, okay? What I think does not work with what these new jacks think today. Just because you got a 1% diamond on doesn't you know, make you a legit 1% club. Not unless you put the work in. That's my opinion. You know, you got the big five that's been around, put in the work. They spill blood. They have guys in prison. Uh, you got the goose... You know, that's one that don't, you know, is not talked about. You got Breed. You got a lot of these clubs that really had to endure law enforcement. So when you come up and ask me, well, you know, this guy says he's a one percenter and the clubs have only been around 10 years, what do you want me to say? That's not the way we were, you know, taught. That's not the way we think. You know, plus every damn club that pops up puts a 1% diamond on. You know, there's some majors that uh, I hear want to take that diamond off now because it's been watered down. It's lost its meaning. So, you can get pissed all you want. That's just the way, you know, we think, the older guys. Uh, but back to what I was talking about about not caring about the general public and everybody's heard me say this well if you don't care what we think or you know you look at down at somebody well, what the hell should we help you for that's a legit question I'd really like you know you can email whatever you want to do an answer to that question if you feel like it doesn't matter to the rest of the biking community what we think why ask for help? Simple question. Why ask for support in the cause? Again, I don't know if this was an actual member or not, but it's a question, you know, that was raised. And I know it used to be like that in the old days. I know that's the way it used to be. But it wasn't as bad as it is today when it comes to profiling. Just look at Texas. If... That was the sentiment of the major 1% club out there. Then 
Why did everybody get involved in, uh, you know, that election with Reyna? See what I mean? It's a double-edged sword. And that's why I always make sure I disclose, hey, I don't know if it was a real member or not, but that would be my response if that was the case. Because now the heat is coming on, baby. It is coming at all angles for everybody, I would have to say. Because the cops are not distinguishing between hog patches, one piece patches. No, they're just lumping you in with everybody else. I've, you know what? I've heard stories of just regular independents being pulled over. And the cops being jerks to them because they think they're in. Well, what club you in? I don't got a patch. I'm not in a club. I'm an independent. BS, you're in a club. All bikers are. That's the kind of, you know, especially these new jack cops that just come out of the academy. They don't know any better. What they're going off of is news in the newspaper. So it, it, it's kind of hard. Kind of hard. When people say, hey, we don't care what you think, and it's like, you know what? <laughs> the first thing out of my mind was that. Well, I give a shit about you then. You know, it's just the way I think. But anyway, let's go over a little bit of this Crime Commission report, and then we're going to go into the biker news. Again, this is going to have to be spread over the next couple days. That way I get it all in. And that way you guys know what the pagans themselves are facing. Because people don't recognize, or they always say it's not true, when a club's profiled. This report right here should get you up to date and a little more knowledge on how law enforcement thinks about them. So... Let's get to it, shall we? Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. This is the state of New Jersey's Crime Commission report. It's titled Outlaw Motorcycle Gangs, The Rise of the Pagans in New Jersey. I'm going to skip the, you know, seven because it just gives a bunch of, you know, it gives the letter, the introduction, what the pagans were about when they were uh, the origin and in history. You know, they got down here originally uh, founded as a fellowship the 13 motorcyclists the pagans were established in prince george's county in maryland in uh 59 then it talked about the structure and uh all that stuff when it came to you know when they went one percenter now let's start out with uh you know page seven maybe go through page nine and then again the rest uh Increase in violent confrontations between the two gangs, and I'm, you know, guessing it was uh, on page six about the Hell's Angels. To drive up its membership totals, the Pagans began recruiting new members from support club affiliates. Well, that is usually done. That's how it's done uh, with the outlaw gang. Meanwhile, the gang uh, remained active in narcotic sales, sometimes employing street gang members. To aid in drug distribution operations, pagans in the region also develop mutually beneficial business relations with La Costa Nostra. That's always been that way. A lot of clubs, uh, you got to, La Costa Nostra runs every damn thing. I don't care what you say. The outfit, uh, the five families up in New York, you got New Jersey, they run the show. So, What's going to happen is they see a few club members hanging out with, uh, you know, one of these guys. They can even be family members. They're going to say, hey, well, they got business relationships where there might not be any at all. In the subsequent years, the Pagans continued their involvement in sporadic violence and in drug distribution throughout the state. But the club's membership numbers remained relatively low in comparison to other outlaw motorcycle gangs like the Hells Angels. 
In New Jersey, the group primarily operated in South Jersey with some pockets of activity in northern sections of the state, such as longtime pagan stronghold Elizabeth, but had not had a uh, significant presence in New Jer or North Jersey since 2009. That all changed dramatically nearly three years ago when the pagans launched a rapid expansion in New Jersey and across the region, not only boosting its membership numbers, but also bringing an unprecedented spike in violence. The Peregrine Shift. Now, law uh, uh, enforcement uh, experts. Now, what is their expertise? They're law enforcement experts. Okay, who are they? Who has given you this information? What agency? That's who I want to know. Expert told uh, the commission that Pagans underwent a radical change in operations after Keith Conan Richter took over the national president in 2018. The Pagans became more militant and eager to incite hostilities with any persons or group perceived as an enemy. With the goal of making the Pagans uh, the region's preeminent 1% club, Richter also utilized unorthodox means to quickly expand its ranks, such as easing or sometimes completely abandoning certain long-established biker customs related to recruitment and membership. This is something, you know what, and I know there's a lot of people that send me this stuff, uh, in they talk about how the pagans are doing this and it's going to be covered in the next section I don't believe it I really don't I do not believe that they're trying that kind of stuff for one Conan he went down uh, you know when the pagans were really going on in the early 2000s I don't know if he was a part of that uh, tattoo expo thing he might have been but I don't see him doing this kind of stuff I see him as a guy that's going to continue the traditions of his particular club. I do not believe, because one thing that these so-called experts don't understand, a lot of clubs go by their bylaws, and those bylaws are set in stone. It takes everybody to vote those bylaw changes, something that's not very easy. And when it comes to a motorcycle club, Especially an old time. This what this happened. Fifty nine. That's what I mean by what I think a one percenter club is. This one started in nineteen fifty nine. They've been through it the whole nine yards, and I'm actually going to put the link to the report I'm going over in the description box. That way, you guys can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, but I cannot believe Conan would do that. I don't believe it at all. Not at all. Now it's going to talk about the radical departures from tradition was elimination of the once lengthy recruitment phase known as prospecting. Under club rules, the prospecting period is usually at least six months. During that time, recruits undergo various hazing type rituals and must prove their loyalty to the gang before they are invited in to join. The commission found that under Richter's regime, some newcomers avoided the prospecting phase altogether by paying cash from $600 to $1,000 to join a gang. I don't buy it at all. Now, the commission's saying that the pagans are involved with La Costa Nostra, crime. Do you really think any organization that supposedly or allegedly has ties to them type of people those type of organizations they're just going to let somebody pay to get in their ranks if they're out there doing illegal stuff do you think they're going to allow somebody to pay to get in their ranks because if that's the case then the feds can just send in undercovers, give them six hundred to thousand dollars. I don't believe I don't buy that. No freaking way. I don't buy that at all. And that right there, I believe, is misinformation. Misinformation.
Most outlaw clubs, including the pagans who own bylaws, state there is no such thing as instant colors for bid payment to obtain membership. In a club, I don't care if you're national president, chapter president, you're all equal when you come to the table. Just because somebody's a national president don't mean, hey, they can go against the bylaws. That's where your sergeant at arms comes into play. That's their job to enforce those bylaws. Yeah, a sergeant at arms can be an enforcer, whatever you want. That's why I'm not buying this argument. I'm not buying, you know what, that's why I always say it's usually only a couple that do that type of stuff. Because if this is the case, they're selling patches, they're into all this stuff as an organized organization, you're going to have a lot of people going down. Because the ones that paid $600 to $1,000 are going to start ratting like hell. And I do not believe, from what I've read about Conan, this to be the case. He's too smart for this kind of crap. I don't buy it one bit. Not one bit. Goes on to say, in a complete reversal of prior practice, the pagans invited certain ethnic minorities and former criminal street gang members to join its ranks. That's been happening forever. Gang bangers join clubs. I did. There's nothing out of the ordinary. The former Bloods, Crips, and uh, Latin Kings brought experience with street violence to the pagans. Bloods and the Crips. Look that up to see if you think that's true. A valuable asset in the club's quest to dominate rivals. While the pagans still prohibit blacks from joining the gang... That's why they're saying the gangbang and stuff, because they're trying to make them out as a white supremacist group. They have recently permitted certain dark-skinned Latinos and other ethnic minorities to become members. What's wrong with that? There's different sets on the scene. You got your white set you got your, you know, and one thing about the white set is they do allow Hispanics in. That's why I don't understand when uh, some of these news outlets try to peg everybody as white supremacists when most of the big clubs I know let Hispanics in. Just saying. And they're probably talking about Puerto Ricans that are coming in. Yeah, they're dark skin. But there's different sets. You got white set, black set. I know a lot of black clubs that have never let a white boy in. Then you got your mixed race set. And then on and on and on. Each one of these have different rules. That's why with the protocol channels, I, you know, I say make sure you notice locally. Because even within the scene... Whites and what blacks do is totally different things, man. Their protocol does not intertwine with a white's uh, protocol. Totally different things, and that's not what's mentioned in clubs. It's always generalized. Anyway. Law enforcement authorities told the commission that inside the pagan organization there has been some internal strife from older members who disagree with these more relaxed approach and believe the gang should adhere to the traditional protocols, particularly those related to barring minorities from membership. Some, here it is. Here it is. And I'm reading this with you right now. Some pagans have white supremacist leanings and, in the past, the gang has affiliations with organizations who hold members or whose members hold those belief during the 2019 ward of the shore event in wildwood a mandatory biker event that draws members from throughout the region sci surveillance observed pagan members with the white supremacist tattoo and patches well i hate to break it to you the black organizations who are into the black panther stuff and hold those leanings the nation of islam don't just peg it on one club and what they're not telling you is a lot of people wear those swazis to keep people away from them. 
That was the whole intended purpose of them. But they don't tell you in this report. While the pagans may have slackened uh, certain rules for membership, the gang's leaders have taken a decidedly more structured approach in relation to the management of the daily operation. Law enforcement, along with confidential sources, told the commission that since Richter took over the pagans' oversight of the club, is stricter and it became more organized than it had in the past. The top leadership is involved in the decision-making process for matters large and small, including keeping track of new prospects. That's the way it's always been. So what you're saying here is nothing new. You're just trying to use freaking uh, Richter as a scapegoat. You're trying to set him up for Rico is what you're doing. You're trying to find predicates. The ATF and FBI is probably freaking got a hard on right now for Richter. But what the guy's doing from just reading the report is what everybody does all the time. Updating membership rockstars uh, for the chapters and approving all merchandise sold by the pagans. That's usually the secretary treasurer job. Uh, what's, the, what's the big deal there? Any organization has this. Like most biker clubs, there you go. There's the sentence. Like most biker clubs. The Pagans are a chapter-based group with individual branches located in a particular region or city. Why well, I'd have to say the same goes with the cop clubs. The overall administration of the organization is run by a group of officers who sit on the governing body of the national club called the Mother Club. Okay. So... Earlier, you were defacing Richter, but here you got the overall administration of the organization is run by a group of officers. They sit at the table. So it's not only one man. At the top is the president, known as the Diamond, followed by the vice president who runs the club in the president's absent, sergeant at arms, secretary treasurer, the Mother Club has general oversight for all facets of pagan business, everything from recruitment matters and ruling on the status of members who seek to leave the club to the authorization of new chapters and approval for all tattoos. Again, then why in the previous page were you going after Conan's leadership if now you're saying there's more people involved on a committee? So it's not only one person. This is not a gang structure. A gang structure is you got the boss at the top, then you got your lieutenants, and it's only a boss that makes the decision. But that's not what you just said here. What you just said here is there's many people involved. So you already, you know what, your report already smells like shit. You, ca you keep contradicting yourself. The individual chapters also have their own chain of command organized under the same structure. Under rules set in the Pagan's Constitution, chapters must hold one organized meeting weekly, a preceding referred to as a church. Only members attend chapter meetings and all attendees must arrive sober. What's wrong with that? Any member who misses three meetings in a row is kicked out of the club. Well, if you're not going to be a part of it, you know, the meetings and stuff, you know, why would they want you? Members pay monthly dues of approximately $100, with at least some portion of those monies flowing up to the mother club, while there are national runs that have to be paid for. Pagans must also participate in bike runs organized by the club and sell pagan authorized merchandise such as t-shirts. Everybody does that. Now, you can tell that there was a rat or somebody because this looks like a constitution right here with their membership rules. So you know they had somebody on the inside. To become a pagan, you must be a male over the age of 18, own a Harley Davidson with an engine 900cc or larger, hold a motorcycle license. 
That's all legit. They even make them hold the motorcycle license. As merchandise earlier or mentioned earlier, the gang does not permit blacks to join the pagans, but has recently somewhat relaxed restrictions, barring entry based only on uh, cultural background, ethnic minorities. So, okay. Then they go on and they continue to hold the line on prohibiting anyone who works in law enforcement, even those long removed from it, joining the game. You lied right there. It's been known that they've had a law enforcement in there. So you lied. You lied. That's why your report from somebody who does the research ain't going to believe it. Again, you're contradicting yourself too much. A recruit must receive a vote of approval from chapter members. Once he has become an official member, the pagan receives his colors. Okay, this is basic stuff. Pagans wear cuts, either leather or denim vests or jackets with the sleeves cut off. Usually it's denim vest. It includes the three piece and then it goes into all that stuff. And it gives an overview from their point of view what they do. So we're on page nine. We'll keep on continuing through. Again, this will be in the description box to go over if you will. Now, let's go to some biker news here. Two people shot in Danville on Sunday by WICS. Police are investigating after two people were shot in Danville at approximately 1.44 a.m. on Sunday, September 20th. Danville police responded to the OSF emergency room regarding two people with gunshot wounds. Authorities said the victims were 23-year-old Danville man with gunshot wounds to his arm and back and a 21-year-old. The victims told police they were in the parking lot of the Untouchables Motorcycle Club. That's the one I'm thinking about? That's a cop club. But, but, that's the one I'm thinking about. I don't know for sure. When someone began shooting at them from an unknown direction, the victims then left the scene and got a ride to the local hospital where the shooting was reported. They uh, have non-life-threatening uh, injuries. Again, Untouchables Motorcycle Club parking lot. Again, I don't know if that's the law enforcement one I'm thinking about. Now, let's go to Julie Shaw. Inquire.com. This is the one I was telling you about. The second man's body that was in the crypt with uh, Keith Palumbo. Uh, there, uh, the Delco man was charged with murder. A 48-year-old Delaware County man has been charged with the murder of the Drexel Hill man whose body was found with a rope tied around his neck in Mount Moriah Cemetery crypt this year. Michael DeMauro of C. Kane is also charged with conspiracy gun offenses and abuse of corpse in the death of David Rosillo, 33. He disappeared in 2017. His body was one of two found in the crypt in the closed Southwest Philadelphia Cemetery when police went there April 3rd to search for Keith Palumbo, 36, a Drexel uh, Hill music musician who was reported missing. An autopsy conducted by the Philadelphia Medical Examiner's Office showed that uh, Rosillo died from homicidal violence in conjunction with uh, multiple sh uh, gunshot wounds according to the affidavit of probable cause in Dimiro's arrest last week. A witness who was not identified in the affidavit told police that he shot Rosillo in the cemetery, then disposed... Ah, uh, somebody's talking in Palumbo's case. They're not uh, identifying the affidavit. It has to be you-know-who. Yep, mm-hmm. Deposed of the Rosilla body in the grave by tying a rope around the neck of the victim and dragging him over the open grave. Uh, Rosilla was not possibly identified as the second body in the crypt until late August when DNA results from a bone sample confirmed the remains was his. Uh, he's in This guy's in uh, Philadelphia jail. His attorney did not return a call Monday. 
Uh, let's see here. DeMero is uh, at least the fourth person charged in the case. Michael DeLuca, an alleged member of the Warlocks uh, Motorcycle Club and childhood friend of Palumbo's from Drexel Hill, is accused of fatally shooting Palumbo in DeLuca's southwest Philadelphia apartment in February. We do have a lot of episodes talking about that, including the investigator uh, that was a uh, missing person investigator. DeLuca is awaiting extradition to Philadelphia to face murder charges after court proceedings. Three others with connections to the Warlock. Buck Evans, Billy Gibson, and Donna Morelli. Yeah, the one in charge. Uh, hmm, I wonder which one of them gave the affidavit. Be, uh, stay tuned. Have been charged with abuse of corpse and related offense. Uh, Rosillo also knew some people that were associated with the Warlocks. Anthony Vouchy, homicide detective, or homicide chief. The affidavit in DeMaro's arrest does not specify the witness who talked to defectives. Somebody's talking, told you it was going to happen. But court documents for Morelli's arrest in the other case indicate she spoke to detectives. Uh-oh! <laughs> Somebody's talking, I'm telling you. We all knew it was going to happen. The same day the witnesses in the DeMaro investigation spoke to police. That's what happens when you get a woman involved. Uh, the unnamed witnesses told police that in December 2017, Rosillo and uh, DeMauro went to the witnesses' home, and all three then walked into the cemetery. Uh, the, DeMario told the witness to go back and get something. The witness said that while at home, he she heard several gunshots coming from inside the cemetery. Shortly afterward, uh, DeMario returned to the house and said he needed help opening a grave. The witness and another person who was also not identified then took tools from the home and went into the cemetery. Well, there was only one person that lived by that cemetery, and that was Donna Morelli. Hey, you haters with uh, the Warlocks, man, are you going to like start posting this on your fake accounts? You know, on Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff? Come on, Volusia, you know you're going to. Anyway, more updates coming soon as, uh, you know, everything pans out here. Now, let's go to, let's see here, Curia Post out of Camden. Two men fatally shot at the wheels of so We covered that one. Uh, I believe one has died again. Uh, let's see here, was found slain. There was one, and then the second victim was taken from the club to an area hospital. He was... Uh, Admitted in critical condition and died later on uh, Sunday, so he did do. Uh, both of them did die. The deaths pushed Camden's homicide total to 15. Man, that's just freaking a Saturday night here in freaking Chicago. With seven slayings since uh, August 24th. Camden had 22 homicides at the same time in 2009. Uh, the investigation is still going. No arrests. Now, the jerk off here. Massachusetts Live, I do not, will not mention the guy's name. Massachusetts man faces charges in New Hampshire crash. That killed seven motorcyclists. Wants to be released while awaiting trial. Uh, defense lawyers uh, filed a motion recently in Coos County Supreme Court stating that they are seeking a hearing and want their client released on personal reconnaissance. Meaning they don't want no bond while he awaits trial. You believe the freaking nerve. The defense lawyer Steve Merkin and Jay Dungaway said the court could place conditions on him if released. He's going to be in Europe by the time he's off. Uh, as soon as he gets out of the jail, he'll be gone. Uh, <laughs> the renewed motion for a bail hearing filed September 16 states he was supposed to have a trial in November. But because of the COVID pandemic, the trial may not begin until March 2021. He was indicted on several counts of negligent homicide and driving under the influence in connection with the June 21st, 2019 crash on Route 2 uh, in Randolph, New Hampshire that left seven members of the Jarheads Motorcycle Club dead. The club is a New England group that includes Marines and their spouses. 
prosecutors have argued he should be uh, remain held and have stated in prior court filings that he had fentanyl, morphine, and chemical found in cocaine in the system on the day of the fatal crash. The Massachusetts man also told the investigators he would take drugs before starting work. So yeah, because uh, COVID's uh, you know slow down his hearing, he wants to uh, be released on his own recognizance. Corey Grass, well, shame. Don't forget to go over and check out his new podcast, man. He's got some good stuff going on over there. So go check out Corey Graff. Tucson uh, police officer arrested after aggravated assault. Yeah, it happened on the 17th. Police officers were called out to the area of 205 West Irvington Road after a report of a fight between several individuals around 7.20 p.m. Upon officers' arrival, they were informed by security that the suspects had already left. Uh, at 8.20, officers were called back to the same location and were told one of the suspects had returned. A security guard uh, pointed out the suspect and told the officers he wanted the suspect arrested. An officer uh, started to make contact with the adult male. He laid face down on the ground, put his hands out. After officers handcuffed the suspect, he became uncooperative and started to resist. Officer William Gallego responded to the scene where he recognized the suspect from a previous encounter and called the suspect by name. Police say the suspect spit on Gallego's pant leg and Gallego responded by putting his boot on the back of the suspect's head. Gallego then walked to his vehicle to obtain a restraint device as he returned and walked past the suspect. He struck the suspect's head with his shin two times. Officers were able to restrain the suspect's legs, but he refused to stand, so officers had to carry him. He was booked in the Pima County Jail. Uh, the suspect was not injured, uh, but based on video evidence, investigators believe Gallego made intentional contact with the suspect's head two different times while he was handcuffs. And he was arrested for it. Dumbasses. Now, let's go to one more Las, Crux, uh, Las uh, Cruces uh, police officer arrested for DWI speeding negligent use of a firearm. Hmm. Uh, a New Mexico State police officer initiated a traffic stop uh, on uh, a 2015 Nissan for speeding. During the traffic stop, the driver was identified as 24-year-old Lourdes Hernandez, Hernandez identified herself as being an officer and having a fire or having a duty firearm in her possession. Hernandez displayed signs of impairment and after a uh, subsequent DWI investigation, she was taken into custody. She was charged uh, with the following aggravated driving while under the influence of intoxicating liquor or drugs. Uh, speeding 73 in a 55 and negligent use of a deadly f weapon. No other information was received. This... Yeah, don't forget to go over to Hollywood and China Dow's uh, YouTube channel. Boy, is that chat get interesting over there. We talk about some interesting uh, topics. Nothing too uh, is too much for us, I tell you. Not you know anything controversial. We'll cover it. Trust me. Uh, but anyway, my final thoughts. That crime commission report. Just what we have read so far, I think, is so full of shit. I'm not, you know what? Again, I've heard people trying to forward me stuff, and I don't believe it one, one thing at all. Not, no, uh-uh. Like I said, when you're dealing with those type of organizations, you don't want to risk. You don't want to risk somebody getting out of line where it can lead right back to you. They mess up, they turn out to be a freaking... Uh, cop undercover then it's you who gets whacked that's why I don't believe that it's a whole club doing it I think it's only a couple members and they seem to be going after Richter well one probably because the cops didn't like him because of what he's been in for 
You know, they always give felons a hard time. But he also isn't the dead stop. Meaning, there's others on the board. So they're trying to blame him for everything, saying he's doing this, he's doing that. Well, how is that the case when you got voting members on the board? What they're trying to do is set him up for a RICO. That's why this commission reports out. They're trying to set up predicates and all that other type of stuff. And the feds are probably working overtime to try to blame it on him. So, no, I do not believe an organization like the Pagans that started in 1959 is selling patches. Because if that's the case, they'd be no better as a pop-up club. And I don't believe the Pagans are. Pop-up clubs do that. New clubs trying to expand do that. The Pagans have been around since 59. Why would they even do something like that? That's what makes no sense in this report to me. Again, a lot of people have been sending in, yeah, they're saying, yeah, they're doing this, they're doing that. Well, what do you care what they're doing any damn way? Are you one of them? Are you one that is involved in their voting process? Probably not. You're probably somebody that don't like the pagans. That's why you're talking like that. Talking like that is no better than you giving information in this report. The report already is biased as hell. And I only went over two pages. There's 22 pages in this thing. And as far as the black stuff's concerned... That don't mean they have white supremacist view. Yeah, I'm not going to say that club, you know, some club members don't. But if they're letting in Hispanics, they're letting in Puerto Ricans, that ain't too freaking, uh, you know, prejudices, is it, or racist? Because those are the same people who have voting rights. It's like they don't even understand how the club works. They're just writing shit they heard. <sighs> look up the untouchables see if that's the one I'm thinking about I really think they're law enforcement I don't know I'll do my research and if I have a follow up to that I'll let you guys know but uh, the ones that got shot uh, on the untouchables uh, property you know there could be it has to be that club club but that's the only one I know that are called that uh, then you have uh, of course the Palumbo thing going on uh this guy being charged with the second body because there was two bodies found in that crypt. And there's only one person that lives across the street, man. And I loved all the haters from freaking uh, the Warlocks with their fake pages. All defending her. And right here is your evidence that, you know, I have to say, you know, if I had a guest. You know, I'm not saying fact. this is fact. But if I had a guest, there's an 8 in 10 chance she's the one who's uh, talking on you guys right now. Because who else was at that house when they heard the shot? And the only other house or the other person who lived at that house was her. So you guys can defend her all you want. But you better look close is all I can tell you, Felucia. That's all I can tell you. Be careful. Be careful. Who is that? Junior, you be careful too, man. Told you. Somebody be talking right away. And that's what's happening right now. Uh, as far as the driver out of New Hampshire, I don't care about him. I, you know what? He can rot. But to even bring up him being released on his own recognizance, what kind of ass nine thing is that to even try? The guy ran over seven freaking people. He had all kinds. He was hopped up on freaking all kinds of drugs. There's a video of him being arrested by cops before this incident's all messed up and high. But you guys know he's a foreign national and he won't be here for trial. That's your game plan because you probably can't win the case. He's going to get convicted. And you're going to try to use COVID-19 as an excuse? 
Of course, that's what everybody's been using. See, he's in the wrong place. If he was in New York, uh, de Blasio would have uh, released him by now. But you're not. You're in Massachusetts, so let's see how that one works out for you. But if they release him, man, the guy's gone. Everybody knows that. Oh, you can set conditions. You know, what, are you going to ankle bracelet them? Like, that's not hard to get out of? All he has to do is have somebody waiting, man, to get him out of the country. Boom, he flies right to his uh, country of origin. Sad state of affairs when, you know, but they are defense attorneys. They got to try what they have to, but, uh, you know, no less than life is not, that's not justice for those seven that were killed, especially uh, the ones that were veterans. No, not justice, not justice at all. Then, of course, you had your wall of shame. What can I say? Wall of shame is the wall of shame. Don't forget to go visit Corey Graff's new podcast. If you're in the chat room, Corey, right now, make sure you give the link to it so people can hear and start following you, man. It takes a lot of work to get a podcast actually going, man. Uh, it takes uh, up to a year or two years to get uh, it repetitive and get people listening it to it. Uh, all that good stuff. Don't forget to go to HarleyLiberty.com. You got your, all your biker news over there, baby. Uh, as soon as it comes out, it gets put on. Uh, so with that, you guys have a good one. Be careful. And again, we'll be continuing uh, our reading of that type of stuff. And hey, if a pagan wants to put out a statement, put out a statement, man. I'll get it out there. But I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Your show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!